Maddie from Hello Interloper here. Before I begin, I'm uh, just going to do a little bit of shameless advertising here. Um, if you guys don't know, I have two blogs that I work on. One is Hello Interloper. Originally, my whole channel started out as just a blog where I talked about stuff, but uh, I've been updating it lately. Might be kind of interesting. It's got some non gaming related things, such as me and my ceramics class. And I also have a blog called Demented Doodles, which has some really strange MS Paint doodles that I left on my sister's computer in 2009. So, uh, just some little funny things to browse. Uh, you can get all the links on my YouTube page. So anyway, that aside, uh, let's talk Blood Brothers. And, um, just a few days ago, I believe it was two days ago, I could be mistaken, yes, it was two days ago, on Monday night, um, I made a video talking about the different uh, familiars that are available in the World Battle Coliseum, and there were no stats available at the time on the wiki, so thankfully somebody updated it, and unfortunately they're not all perfect evolution stats, but we can get a better idea of what is available and you know what these are going to be like once World Battle Coliseum is all over. Uh, before I quickly go into that, I just want to tell everybody who hasn't been on the game lately to log in. Everybody has gotten a Scarlet Coin as an apology for some event issues. Um, actually, there is a picture right here of the screen you will get when you log in. Put a Scarlet Coin, 10 event coins in your wagon. Of course, uh, I used my 10 event coins, only got uncommons and commons, which was a little bit depressing, but uh, all players get 1.5 times event points during the third round, which is open right now. The third round being Sage's Keep. And um, it turns out that one interesting thing about this event is that each keep is worth more points. So, you know, Jester's Keep releases first day was worth the least, Warrior's Keep is worth more, Sage's Keep is worth the most. So uh, a lot of people are fighting over Sage's Keep now, and I've had been I've been on the losing team for two days, so finally I'm on a team that's actually, you know, pretty evenly matched, and uh, we're fighting over Sage's Keep a lot, so it's kind of interesting. I've, I've been participating a little bit. So, uh, anyway, on to the event elites and rares and whatever. So, uh, Sir K the Golden Bat, uh, he's the last evolution of this guy, and I before said that the elites weren't going to be very useful. Uh, I'm completely wrong. I've fought some elites, and this guy just from doing a regular attack... When he's fully evolved, does 45k damage. So, it's rather scary. So you can just imagine when he uses his scale, he kills two people outright. Um, but the nice thing is that he's going to be kind of useful even after this event is over. Because the perfect evolution stats shows that he has about 15.5k attack. That's a lot of attack. Um, and as you can see, they're experimenting more with this whole crazy... Uh, stat appropriation, you can see very, very low wisdom, pretty low defense, pretty low HP, and then we have this crazy attack, and eh, the Agi's okay. You know, 10k is not that bad, there's a lot worse. Um, then we have Solston the Really Wanted, he's the uh, legendary that's being given out, and though there are no perfect evolution stats available, there's Max, so um, I guess it's safe to assume that this might not be a perfect evolution, but it might be. Um, but we see fairly high wisdom, and that probably gives us a hint that Furious Cannon, sometimes deal fire damage to all foes and sometimes lower attack, uh, might actually be wisdom based. We don't know yet, unfortunately. It says it's an attack, but you know, it doesn't say it's attack based. And we don't know it's multiplier at the moment. So, um, Gorlin Goldhelm, uh, he's the guy who's given out um, for the daily rewards. We do have perfect evolution stats, thank goodness. And as you can see, he's pretty good, but once again, extremely low wisdom. Actually, even lower than Sir K the Golden Bat. Um, but he's got incredible defense, and seeing that his ability is Bulwark, which is a new ability um, that is a defensive ability here, uh, it says that he reduces physical damage taken by self and nearby familiars generally around 30 to 50%. So, we can assume from that, you know, uh, last video I was saying that it's probably going to be similar to Griffin's Blade Ward 2, except it doesn't apply to all familiars, just the two next to Gorlin and also Gorlin himself. So, uh, if it is 30 to 50%, it's a little bit less and a little bit better than the Griffin's uh, Blade Ward. 
and it has a probability of 70%, so it's pretty nice. I mean, if you have some familiars that are extremely vulnerable, like low defense or something like that, he would probably be pretty nice to have on your team. Of course, uh, there aren't going to be very many of him in the economy because he's given as a daily reward, not exactly... Um, I don't believe he comes from event coins. I could be wrong, of course. But either way, his attack and HP are pretty okay. Once again, Agi isn't spectacular, 10k. But his wisdom's really low, which means he's probably going to be very vulnerable to uh, magical attacks. Now, finally, Adara, Luckshot, number two, aka Ugly Cakes. I really, really don't like the design of this uh, familiar. Although, at least she has a cool helmet sort of hat thing. Yeah, she's got, like, spiky goggles. I'll give her that much, but she's just creepy looking. A little child with pointy teeth. But anyway, um, we do have some stats. They're not perfect evolution, unfortunately. But we can kind of have an idea of what her stats are like. She has a very low agi. And um, her ability is also a new attack called Payback. And uh, I'm actually going to open that up right now. So uh, probability is 50%. It's a 230 attack multiplier. Take damage and counter. So it's basically a cloak and dagger sort of thing that only applies to herself. And uh, the mo attack modifier is definitely better than cloak and dagger. I'm going to quickly look up cloak and dagger for you guys. And uh, I totally did not put in the A in the dagger word there. Yes. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, cloak and dagger is a 100% attack multiplier. So you could just imagine 230. It's going to be a lot. A lot of damage. So anyway, um, still, uh, her attack's fairly low, so even with that crazy attack multiplier, she won't really be doing that much. It's not going to be, you know, jaw-dropping. I'm sorry about the thing skipping around. It seems that a, an ad is loading slow, and then it loads and moves the little recording box. Anyway, so she has got a good, really, uh, really good defense, and, uh, Really nothing much else except for HP. I don't know. I don't like this familiar. I won't be using this familiar. I'm not going to be buying this familiar after the event, so... I don't know. You can disregard her if you want. She's going to be probably extremely cheap, like one or two Gyaller Horns, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. Um, so anyway, that's the stats, and I'm going to quickly tell you guys about something that you can get for pretty cheap. Uh, probably spelled this wrong. No, I didn't. Okay, so Lamasu was the event um, rare given through the last event. And uh, I was discussing before how she's really not as good as um, some other familiars because she has an ability that's pretty much torn of ice without the freezing ability. However, she's got a very nice wisdom. And I'm going to click uh, Lamasu the Merciful 2, which is the full evolution. And as you can see, she's got almost 15k wisdom. And everything else is above 10k, which is fairly nice. Now, the thing that you guys should know is that you can make a Lama Sue the Merciful 2 for extremely cheap. Uh, she, well, her rare form, uh, one star rare, is only about two Gyaller Horns, sometimes three Gyaller Horns at the moment. So you can make her for extremely cheap. Um, so if you do have a wisdom based team, it might be good to pick some of these up. So anyway, uh, that's about all I have to talk about uh, Blood Brothers at the moment. So I'm going to go into some question and answer session sort of thingy. Because uh, right now I'm just being flooded with questions. And I haven't really done a question and answer session for a while. Right now I'm answering questions that came in on March 12th and afterwards. So uh, if you guys have been waiting a while, about a month, for me to answer a question, I'm extremely sorry. I'm getting into it right now. So, um, I got a question from Jack underscore Daniels 2 He asks, Hi, Maddie. I tried to build a Tamitomo Master Archer 2 for a while now. So, uh, I'll quickly look him up to give you guys uh, an idea of what this guy's talking about. I got my perfect evolution Tamitomo with some crystals. As I used him now more often, I noticed that his way of using his skill has changed. Do you know anything about that? Because now I don't think I want him anymore and thinking about selling him. What do you think? Um, Tamatomo, I na actually never have used him, never had him, so I don't really know too much about him in the whole regards of 
his skill changing. But um, I didn't hear anything about Shadow Volley changing. Uh, here's a little infographic here. Rain arrows on three random targets in the rear line. 150 times multiplier for attack. Three foes in rear line. So, um... Tamtama's ability, I have seen it in action, however, and it pretty much chooses three random guys in the rear line to attack. So, let's say there's only one guy in the rear line, you will attack that guy three times. Of course, if he dies before those three attacks go through, you know, that's great. But, um, honestly, I see a lot of people using Shadow Volley as one of their skills for their Warlord. Tamatomo, even though he uh, has some fair, you know stats here, you can see uh, every one of his stats is over 10k. He's not bad at all. Uh, but he's not spectacular. I mean, you could get a Farwall, the Glutton, or whatever his name is. You know, the fat d dragon dude. He does a slashing attack, which means that he'll hit everybody in the rear line once. Which could be useful, of course, if somebody puts all their guys in the rear line. But uh, Tamatomo is more good in situations where you know, you want to wipe out as many guys as possible, not just harm as many guys as possible. So, I don't know. I, I like Tamatomo's ability, and I think he's a good um, familiar. But, of course, if you have uh, all event rares, it doesn't really matter. He's not really that good. So, whether or not you want to actually sell him, I guess it's kind of subjective. If he hasn't really been benefiting your team that much, go ahead and sell him. However, he's really not bad. I mean, there are a lot worse out there. And uh, Shadow Volley is a good ability. So uh, that's my opinion on Tamatomo. Let's see what the next question is. Uh, Danny asks, what are the orders of all the different massive attacks? And if you know the danger range, each cover. Um, I'm assuming that you mean the skills that say, does massive damage to frontline, does massive damage to backline. Um, so I'll just quickly look up one of them that I can think about the top of my head. Frontal Assault, I believe, says deals uh, very heavy damage on the front line, but uh, unfortunately it doesn't exactly say massive. But I, I do know off the top of my head that there are certain um, familiars that say they, they do massive attacks. Uh, how come I can't think at the moment? There's Frontal Assault, Rear Assault, Massive Assault, Focused Assault. Oof, there's so many. Frontal Onslaught, that's what I was talking about. Deal heavy damage in the front line. Still doesn't say massive. Well, basically put, I mean, it would take forever for me to look through absolutely every single familiar to try to find um, abilities that say deal massive damage. But um, the thing that you should probably do is go on the Blood Brothers wiki. It's bloodbrothersgame.wikia.com. Uh, I can actually move this up here, can't I? Yeah, there we go. You can kind of see the um, URL there. Wait. Move that there. Yeah, there we go. So, um, if you look that up, you can look up any skill you want and find out their information like I do here. Um, that might be a little bit easier because, unfortunately, there's just so many skills in this game right now. And there are some skills that are essentially the same as another one. I mean, we have Massive Assault, Intense Assault, and the only difference between them, other than the fact that, you know, well is their name, and also the attack multiplier. But they both go towards one singular familiar. It's a one familiar attack. But uh, then we got Blitz Assault. I mean, there's just so many different skills that I could probably go search for all of them, but it will take forever. So um, if you want to find out information, the wiki is definitely a good place to go. Okay, so I have somebody named the Cookie Alpha asking a question about their attack band. I'm planning to build an attack band for my second account, and have the Red Samurai Warlord with Berserk, Strength of Blades, and Siphon. My question is, what should I get for my other four slots to complement my Warlord? I read that many recommend Oni Roku, but it's rather expensive. Are there any cheaper yet sturdy substitutes? Um. Oni Roku, let's look him up for a moment. Oni Roku the Unhinged number two. Ah, that's not his full evolution. Oni Roku the Slayer two. Here we go. Uh, I actually have Oni Roku the Slayer two. He's pretty nice. I mean, his stats are pretty well rounded. Uh, he's got a good amount of attack, and Venom Storm does a pretty nice amount of damage. Venom Storm over here. 
deal heavy poison damage to three foes, 150 attack multiplier, and has a chance of doing poison. So, um, Oniroku is pretty good. A lot of people do recommend Oniroku because, you know, Venom Storm is very popular. It's good in raid bosses, good in PvP. It's just generally a pretty nice, uh, familiar. Now, if you want to have something that's kind of as sturdy, but maybe not as expensive, um, that's pretty hard. Honestly, I've been recommending Farwall to everybody, just because, I mean, he's so cheap, and he's really not bad at all. If I look up Farwall the Glutton here, uh, you can get him very easily for a very small amount, and his attack... His attack stats are actually nicer than Oniroku, and he does have rubber arm, which can be really good in certain certain situations. Ugh, sorry, getting a little tongue tied, but um, he also has a hundred fifty attack multiplier. And let's say that you are fighting a team where all the familiars are in the rear line, or they're all just in any line. It could be the front line too. That'll technically still be classified as the rear line because you know it's just one line. But either way, um. You could get an attack, 150 attack, to every familiar in the right situation, which is technically better than Venom Storm if you just take into the account that there might not be uh, poison involved. But, uh, you know, hitting five guys with rubber arm is kind of better than three with poison. At least in my opinion. And he's also just so cheap compared to Oni Roku. You could probably fill up your whole team with these guys for about the price of an Oni Roku and probably have some saved left over. But um, another thing to look into, of course, is these event rares. Event rares tend to have extremely nice stats, and in certain situations, they are very, very cheap. And that's my alarm. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry about that. So... Basically, you get very cheap familiars with nice stats, and the fact that there's just so many in the economy means they're really cheap. Of course, some will be more expensive than others, as we uh, saw with Ira Spectre, simply because Ira Spectre has a chance to pretty much kill two guys no matter what. Uh, I'll look up Ira Spectre number two here, show you guys. Do, 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 do. Ooh, clicking. There we go. Uh, Ira Hypnotic Spectre 2 has, uh, you know, some pretty good stats. Not that amazing, but because of her high agility, she always goes first, pretty much. And then head bash, her head bash, at least, it's pretty much guaranteed to kill two people outright. So you can see why some event familiars will be better than others. Um, she, she's very high in demand. She's extremely expensive, but you can usually get a very decent event rare for two, three, four, five Galar horns, build up a nice, perfect evolution for really cheap. You don't have to go back to old event rares like Oni Roku. I mean, Oni Roku was maybe released one, two months ago. I could be wrong. But, you know, there's an event every week, and there's always an event rare that's introduced every week. You can get something really cheap very easily that's just as good as an Oni Roku. Um, so, let's see... Navas Jose 36 asks, what is the easiest way to get a legendary? Um, if we're talking about just pure simplicity, of course, the easiest way would to be buying a bunch of packs and just hope that one of yours is a legendary. Of course, that's not exactly practical because not all of us have crazy pocket change to be able to afford that many packs. I mean, each pack is about $3 unless you buy a special deal of some sort. And those are rare anyway. And of course the chance that you get a legendary is pretty low to begin with. Um, the best way to get a legendary is of course just play the bazaar. I always say play the bazaar and I know it sounds really weird but by just having any familiar, just literally any familiar, trading it for another that's maybe worth a few Galar horns more and then selling that off, it may take a day, day or two maybe, if it just doesn't sell but it's still a profit, and that's what matters most. Of course, um, use your energy whenever you can, because sometimes from reliquaries, reliquaries, I don't know how to say that, but either way, sometimes you get mandrakes, sometimes you get Gyalor horns, most of the time you get a silver coin or some money or an elixir or something like that. But uh, there still is a chance of getting a Gyalor horn, and that's always good. And then, of course, if you get a silver coin, copper coin, whatever, just from using your energy, you also have a chance of pulling a rare or an epic or whatever from 
you know, silver packed, copper packed. Just always use your energy because who knows? Just even the tiniest little things count. And of course, with the bazaar, you know, sell off your event rares if you have them. Use your bugles during an event just to see if you can get uh, an event rare rank up, you know, something like that. Um, just work at it and make sure that you don't buy, you know, something that's overpriced. It's always good that if you want to buy something, and let's say it's a, an event rare, let's, uh, once again, let's let's talk about Firewall here. Firewall is insatiable. Uh, when he first came out, he was about six or five Gyalor horns the day after the event. Um, and of course, you know, people were scrambling to sell, scrambling to buy, scrambling to build them up. But of course, about two weeks later, he's worth two Gyalor horns. Never rush on something like this, uh, because it's just not worth it. I mean. For the price of one the very first day, you can buy three now. It's just kind of doesn't make much sense. So don't be hasty. Be patient. You know, use all your energy. Check the prices. I'll get to know the prices on the bazaar. Get to know the, you know, the scales involved with each familiar. The more you play, the better you just get at it. That's pretty much my opinion on it. And eventually, you will probably be able to afford legendary. Um, but I'm I'm gonna be completely blunt. Not even I have a legendary. Uh, I could probably sell some of my familiars and buy one, but it just wouldn't be worth it. I would much rather have a solid team of fully evolved epics than you know have some crappy epics and one legendary. I mean, I I've beaten teams that have had a legendary because they're a one star legendary, which is just about as good as a fully evolved four star epic, you know. Just because it's legendary doesn't mean it's amazing. When it's a two-star legendary and it's fully evolved with crystals and whatever, that's going to absolutely decimate your team. But, you know. Okay, so I have an anonymous person asking, how do you film using your computer? Um, I use a program called Livestream. And I'm going to actually go to Livestream.com. Um... There's, I believe you can get it from here, live video tools. I'm not entirely sure. Um, Livestream has changed lately. Here we go. That's it. Livestream Procaster. It's um, a program. And in fact, you could just probably type it in um, on Google, Livestream Procaster. And uh, it's a free thing. And uh, it, it's rather useful. I mean, here, let me show you. A little bit better here. Um, it's rather easy to use. You press go live, and then you have a green box, and you can move it around, you know, to film different areas. And uh, of course, you have to go to preferences, preferences. Bleh, can't speak today. And um, there is an option to save directly onto your computer. That's what I do. It, it technically is a streaming program where you can stream to like, you know, sort of like Twitch, uh, Twitch TV, but. You also have the option to save it to your disk, and that's how I make my videos. I don't care if it streams. I, I turned off all the streaming stuff. It's not connected to a streamy thing or anything. Uh, I just record directly to my hard drive, and then I upload that video once I'm done. Um, you do need to sign up to get an account, and you know you do have to download the actual program, but um, it's worked pretty well. I haven't had any problems with it so far, although... Um, if you use it for recording games, it's not compatible with all games. I mostly just, you know, use uh, open broadcast thing software for that. Here, let me f open this up. Uh, this is also another, if it, live stream doesn't work, uh, open broadcaster software is a free program that allows you to you know, record your screen, depending whether or not it's games or just your screen or whatever. It's pretty good, but the only thing is it's a little bit more complicated to use. Uh, there are a lot of guides on the internet on how to set up your stream if you want to stream, how to you know save it, make the video nice quality and whatever, but um, generally put, this is an amazing alternative to live stream. And the nice part is you don't actually have to sign up for anything. So that's how I record on my computer. 
Uh, let's see what the next question is. Um, I had a lot of people asking me if I can be their ally or share my username. And I actually had a question that I saw that uh, asked me why I don't share my username. Uh, I'm going to be perfectly blunt. Mobage is not happy about my channel. And I'll say that because before I kind of shared how to do uh, Tears of the Moon glitch with Rage of Bad Moon, I showed how to do um, make another account through Blue Stacks. And Mobage does not approve of those things. Um, I actually accidentally put the username of one of my dummy accounts in one of my old videos that's no longer available. But uh, it was a dummy account that was made for me by a friend. Turns out that uh, my friend kind of... Uh, he didn't really know what he was doing at the time. So he somehow had all these accounts connected. I think because he didn't change his phone ID or something like that. But because of that, Mobage ended up blocking that account that was featured in my video and all his other accounts. Of course, it only got maybe about half of his accounts. He was okay, but still, losing accounts sucks. So uh, I learned my lesson from that. I try to be extremely careful not to share my username because there's so many different things that you could talk about on a Blood Brothers channel that could potentially get you in trouble with Mobage. I mean, we all kind of know that if you download BlueStacks, you can make another account because technically it acts like another phone. Um... And, you know, just even talking about a glitch will make my account bannable, even though I'm just making a video. So I, I don't share my username. I'm not going to become any of your friends on Blood Brothers, Allies, whatever. I'm really sorry about it, but I just don't want to get banned. <laughs> Obage is very tough on uh, their policies. So um, if you are going to talk about, you know, trading even, I mean, it's crazy that trading is an issue but they don't like it when people trade things between accounts or of course sell things for real money um i probably would just get banned for talking about this in my video which is crazy but anyway so that's why i can't be your ally i'm sorry okay so i have another anonymous person asking how do i make my team stronger for raid boss events i have two zombie dragons one rose dragon one fafnir two any suggestions First of all, I'm just going to say all of your team seems to be PvP oriented. Um, raid boss events, you know, you are looking for abilities that have multiple hits or, of course, something like Massive Assault, Intense Assault, although, of course, Massive Assault is better than Intense Assault. Let's just put that out there because uh, it does more attack, multiplier sort of damage stuff. But either way, things that you know, do overall attacks, such as Zombie Dragon uses Torrent of Poison, it's used for attacking many guys at the same time. Meanwhile, let's look at Berserk, for instance. Ah, uh, that's just a good example on the top of my head here. Berserk is used for multiple guys. However, it's also useful in raid boss attacks because it deals damage to six random targets. So, let's say you only have one target. It'll attack that target six times. And meanwhile, Torn of Flame, Torn of Poison, they attack all the familiars on the screen. So, if you are to attack a raid boss, it will just be like attacking one familiar. Do like, you know, a few thousand damage. Unless, of course, you have Guile of Runes, in which case it'll do like 14k damage. But either way, that's still not that great. Um, with raid boss encounters, you generally want something that attacks random targets, or something like Massive Assault, you know, uh, here, I spelt Massive Assault wrong, because I'm stupid, I actually think I have a problem with my A key, there we go, okay, so Massive Assault does a 400 times attack multiplier uh, towards one foe, and if that one foe is a raid boss, of course, that does a lot of damage. And if you use an all-out attack, <laughs> you could just imagine the damage you do. But either way, make sure that, you know, you have s some familiars that do single-target attacks, random attacks, those kind of things. Because, unfortunately, if you do get into a raid boss encounter with Zombie Dragon, Rose Dragon, and Fafnir, you really won't be doing much damage at all. And uh, also, Fafnir 2 and Zombie Dragons 
unfortunately their defense and stats overall aren't that great. They have, you know, one really good stat, which tends to be their wisdom. And um, Rose Dragon is, you know, a really good choice for PvP, but definitely not for a raid boss event. So just look into some other familiars. I mean, even event elites for the raid boss attack tend to be way better, because they usually have a ability that does multiple targets, you know, like attack two random targets, which will attack the raid boss twice, or of course they have something like Mass Assault, Tense Assault, Icicle, whatever. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. You gotta look at some other familiars for that, not ones that split damage among everybody. So, um, I think this will be my final question for the day. It's from Lord Pikachu, and they're asking, For my Warlord, I was thinking of getting a good attack skill, either Berserk or Venom Storm, since I have uh, Strength of Blades, and they're the cheap, good ones. Any thoughts on what I should pick? Both seem good, and I know about the damage multiplier and number of hits, but it's still a hard choice. Which would be good for both PvP and raids? Thank you, and you rock! Well, first of all, thank you very much. And no problem, I'm always happy to answer questions to the best of my ability. Um, I gotta say, Berserk versus Venom Storm. That's a pretty tough choice, because um, Berserk, it's a great attack. I mean, if you have a very high attack um, Warlord, Berserk could do amazing damage. I'm sorry, this just keeps skipping around here. Berserk, here we go. Berserk does 80% attack, multi-attack, so... I mean, it's pretty nice to attack six random targets. In PvP, it's definitely good. And it's also good in raids. Um, my personal choice, though, would have to be Venom Storm. And I'll tell you guys why. I'm going to quickly look up Venom Storm, just so you guys have a visual here. Um, although Berserk, of course, attacks six random targets, it could be good for, you know, finishing off certain familiars. Venom Storm is more likely to completely kill a familiar. And I say this because it is a 150% attack uh, bonus, but it's also, you know, it has poison. It's good for raid bosses because of the poison, but in order to, you know, really do well in PvP, you have to usually finish things off before they attack you. And um, Berserk, it's nice for finishing guys off if they're already hurt, but. Venom Storm is just, it's good for finishing them off right away, you know, killing them before they attack you. Um, just because it's a very good attack multiplier, and, um, you know, sometimes Berserk will just be completely random, halfway hurt your enemy team, but not actually kill anyone. And then, you know, you're still getting the full brunt of the attack. Uh, Venom Storm has a lot higher chance to kill one to three different familiars, or you know, severely maim them enough to kill them in the next round or whatever. Uh, so that's why I prefer Venom Storm, personally. Uh, of course, um, Ice Fist is great too. I mean, a Warlord with Ice Fist tends to be extremely scary. Uh, of course, it doesn't have the poison, so it's not as great in uh, raid boss events because you definitely want to have at least one familiar that has a poison ability. Just because a poison attack every round, you know, if you do poison the raid boss, it'll do 99,999 damage, which is a great bonus, no matter how you look at it. Um, but of course, Ice Fist is just crazy. I mean, it has 20% more attack. Uh, it doesn't have the poison, but pretty crazy damage. Well, anyway, um, hope these answers helped all of you, and of course, send any questions you want. I know it's kind of going slow uh, answering all of them, but doing my best. Got a pretty busy schedule with school and everything. So, um, oh wait, actually, <laughs> I seem to have one more question to, that I can answer really quickly. Farjadarshad says dragon. I know, that's a crazy question, right? <laughs> I swear, sometimes I occasionally get some very weird things here. Like, you know, I just get somebody mashing their keyboard. But, uh, yeah. Dragon. So, anyway. 
<laughs> uh, feel free to submit more questions. The question submitting form is in the description of this video, just in case um, you guys are confused. Asking me a question on the comments section of the video itself, definitely not a good way to reach me just because I get so much, you know, ID scan, not scam, spam, you know, people sharing their IDs and everything. So usually when I get a comment on YouTube, I don't even check it because they're just way too many to check. So uh, it's best to send it through the form. And don't worry, it's completely safe. It's Google sort of form thing for Google Drive, which is their equivalent of Microsoft Word and whatever. It's it's completely anonymous. You can be completely anonymous just by not inputting a name. So it's all nice and safe. Don't worry. <laughs> so anyway, hope this helps out. Good luck in Blood Brothers. Until next time.